Hello and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, the news is good for another week. Congratulations on a win over Syracuse. Physical game, but you guys were able to get the lead, and uh, really the, the outcome was not in too much doubt the way you were able to score and be efficient. We really were. A very physical game. Uh, offense was very efficient on the day. I think we had the one turnover, but scored almost all the time. Great on third down, great in the red zone. Uh, threw the ball around, ran the ball when we had to run it, and I uh, really saw Dalvin Cook emerge out. Pender, I thought, had a really nice game that we got nicked up. Had a great touchdown run in the first one. Uh, defensively, tremendous in the red zone, tight zone. Uh, created three big turnovers in the game, which is very critical. Uh, and in the kicking game, we were very soft. That Kaysen had one punt. He, he didn't kick as good, but he still got a good roll. And the other one, he really boomed. Had the two, they only had two punts in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we covered kicks pretty well. So it was good, solid. Anytime you go on the road and win, especially you travel that far, it's, uh, it's a good outing. A couple of record-setting performances, yeah. too, which we'll talk about. Uh, congratulations to Rashad Green and Nick O'Leary. We'll get to that when we get to the first half highlights, so stay with us. We are just getting cranked up here on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Florida State goes on the road, coach to Syracuse, and uh, that Carrier Dome, uh, uh, you know, domes are a different deal, and there's obviously yeah. a lot of history and tradition associated with Syracuse football. They really years. are. I mean, you got 15 Hall of Famers <laughs> <laughs> from your university and, and associated with football. That's a lot of tradition, a lot of history, but it's a very tough place to play. It's a long way to go on a road trip, a noon game. There was a lot of different circumstances that we hadn't faced all year, and uh, proud of our guys. Come out and got a great start in the beginning. <clears throat> good kickoff. They kicked it away from Kermit. Got it to Bobo right here. We miss a block, and he bounces it and, got, and ends up making a real good play. I thought there should have been a horse collar on this play. They snatch him right there. thought that was clearly a, uh, a horse collar that uh, they missed, but, uh, you know, it, it, I thought it was a really well-officiated game. We started off moving the ball around. Mario Pender was outstanding on the day. He got nicked up, and he, he catching the ball in the backfield, running, doing some things. Dramus doing a great job of mixing the ball around to different people. I think we had seven or eight, nine possible guys that caught the ball today. I'm not sure how many, but a bunch of, bunch of new faces, young guys. Here he is on his own read, just pulling it and keeping it, picking up four or five. Now, I got a real cheap shot right there. That's, they got to be almost popped him right there in the head. He could hurt somebody. And uh, here, watch this run. We block them all, and that's the eighth man to safety, how they get the extra guy out of the box. That's what great backs do. Make that guy miss, and he stuck it in the end zone in on top of that. That was a tremendous – we blocked the play perfectly. Sometimes they get an extra guy out of the box, and when they did, he just made him miss, and that was a heck of a run. Defensively here, we lost the edge uh, real quickly right there, but good good tackling. We tack we only had six or seven missed tackles in the whole ballgame. I thought we tackled very well in the game. <clears throat> that was uh, P.J. Williams right there on the stop. They pick up a third down. Terrence got a widen on that hook zone right there. He didn't get off the hash enough. Give him a little hit, but the, Syracuse did a nice job moving the ball. They changed some things offensively, so did a couple things we hadn't seen. We knew they would, new offense coordinator, new quarterbacks. We adjusted, they moved the ball, but when we really buckled down as we got to that red zone. Here they picked up a third down, we didn't get a call. Uh, they, they communicated in the coverage right there. Jalen went over, makes a nice play. Uh, here they're trying to run the ball inside. There's Terrence Smith, Eddie Goldman inside. You see him making play. Eddie had a tremendous game. Most steady guy of the group. Uh, Desmond Holland there, you see him there, and they, they get, to, get to throw, and uh, P.J. had good coverage. Guy just got it about, about a two-inch wind, and he got it in there. Their, their young quarterback threw the ball very well. Now, here we are, coverage sack. Here we are, keeping contained. Good job by Desmond. We're running to the football. Really good job of getting Reggie North and getting them on the ground there. Uh, here they are. They're pumping it. They do a little dash action, which we had seen the week before on a play. They've tried this a couple times. Once they got outside, but it was Jalen Ramsey. Stepped in front and made a big-time interception in that red zone, and we had great red zone defense on the day. <coughs> And again, we take the ball right back down and get to scoring again. And uh, there's Pender popping it up in there. Should he, I thought he could have stuck that one just a little bit more right there, but we did good blocking up front. There's uh, our offensive line. Jameis stood in there and took two of them. Two guys hit him right in the mouth on a blitz. He, he delivers a strike on third and ten and gets a big – Bobo Wilson had another good solid game for us. Here we are finding uh, Rashad Green one-on-one -on -one outside. And we keep – anytime we can get him one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to go to him. And uh, good job of picking up the blitz. Ryan Hofield and the boys in town. They got the third down and eight. Run a similar type play, and they mugged and held him. And uh, it was a big hole for them. They were juiced up and ready now. But look at Pender. I mean, Pender making guys miss, running, reckless. I thought he had a really good game. Really good. Travis Rudolph in there, too. You saw him in the picture right there blocking. With Dalvin Cook, who came in and had an outstanding, had 23 carries, 122 yards filled it in for after Pender got hurt. And great job. Uh, we got to hold on to that ball right there. We, that was a third down pickup on the five. It was the only time we didn't score a touchdown in the red zone, four out of five, and we had it. We just dropped the slant route, and uh, we got to make that play. But of course, we got old Roberto, so he comes in, gets us three, and we get two, you know, two straight drives, and we score points. Now we need to hold them, and they get to scrambling around here. A nice tackle, great open field tackle, doing a much better job stepping on the toes there. Uh, they run a jet sweep, lost the edge right there. PJ 
is in perfect position to make the play. And he, and he bites inside. Just, just made a poor choice. Couldn't have been in a better call. Just got to execute what we're doing a little better. Here, they get a scramble and a tremendous catch. Actually, I thought they tried to hold our end right there. We were getting contained, but that was a heck of a play by them. Great throw and catch. They made plays. They were ready to play. Again, they had nothing to lose. They're playing the number one team in the country and laid all on the line. Here you go, Terrence Smith blitzing, getting the hands out. Ter Tyler Hunter, who, had a, who got a pick on the day, had another good solid day, and they hit a field goal, and it's 10-3. Uh, to 3. Now, I believe they kicked that one out of bounds. Yeah, they did, They getting, which we got good field position now, and uh, we start marching back down the field. Jameis here steps up and almost hit the backside safety because of the delay and the pressure. We did a good job of breaking up the interception. He would have been out of the play, but when they delayed him and had to scramble, the safety saw it and got back over the top. Now, here we get a little screener. Travis Rudolph, and I'll tell you what now, you talk about a guy who's going to be a heck of a receiver and he got great running skills. Ermin Lane in there blocking for him. Those guys doing a great job. Six targets and six catches. For yes. Here we hit the, hit the screen underneath to uh, Rashad Green. Rashad almost takes this one to the house. Great blocking downfield. And uh, just an excellent play by Rashad. And we get the ball inside the five. And we got to get in and score a touchdown. Here they are. We have second down play. Jameis actually goes to his third read here. We had two inside guys. We were trying to work Nick and Bobo, and then the third guy, they played him. So he checked down to his third guy in the flat to, to Mario Pender there, who got in the end zone. Mario had two touchdowns on the day, one catching and uh, one running, and uh, excellent job on the day. Kickoff coverage. Now, we got a little short kick. Roberto missed that kick right there, and that cost us a little bit because it time, screwed up the timing of our coverage, and they got a little bit better return. He hit under it just a hair. For the most part, except for about three runs, we played the run very well on the day. There's uh, – was that Mario Edwards in there? That was uh, Giorgio Newberry in our, was helping on this. We lost contain. Lorenzo got to be on the edge. He's supposed to be upfield. Jacob Pugh chasing it down from the backside. I say with Lorenzo and some of those young ends, they make a lot of great plays. Occasionally, you're going, you, we're having to live with some little things that they're getting better at. They'll consistently get better, and we'll do a better job on it. Here, we actually busted here. Reggie should have slid out with the motion and played the back, and they dropped the ball. We got, we got a break right there again. Terrence Smith on the blitz, a great job of forcing the ball out. We got the ball out of bounds by uh, P.J. got the guy out in third down. We got to stop. Now we get back here. This one here, the guard, the center, he's blocking, <laughs> and he, his guy left, and he come back in and hit Mario. It's actually where Mario got hurt. He was hurt a little bit right here. See him gimping right here, and uh, he put the ball on the ground. And no matter what, we can't put that ball on the ground. There's no excuse for that. And that big, other one could have come out there for a big-time play. We tackled our own guy. But uh, Ryan had a great day. I thought he played really well. Uh, good job by Terrence Smith inside. Ready north of Eddie Goldman. Uh, covering in the flat, Terrence Smith doing a good job. They were mixing around, giving different looks. But again, we were so – ball was tipped. There was no interference there because the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure who tipped that. might have been Eddie. But, uh, again, settle for a field goal. If you can keep making them settle for field goals, that's, that's your job, especially when they get down in there. And we take the ball back and we start moving. Find Nick O'Leary. You know, we, we targeted Nick a bunch. But, and again, like I say, some games it gets to him and others it didn't. They were playing the other guys now because we were hitting them so much. Great job of uh, Kermit on the scramble, coming over in Jameson's window and finding it that – and Nick was able to get back in the action. Here we go. We get a go route right here, and you'll see him, see the guy holding the guy on the shoulder, pulling on his jersey, and, uh, you know, we, we like that matchup going into the day. And uh, we got a 15-yard penalty, and we had to keep moving the ball down the field. Jameis was really good. Now, this here was a third check. We had a double move down the field, had a guy in the flat they had covered. He comes back to a third read on a check down back inside. Just really taking what they get. Again, Nick O'Leary was second read on this play. Just keep moving the ball with positive plays, eliminating the negative plays, and they you know, just did a great job. And here, we, he looked, oh, they had a blitz. He picked it up off the black side. He looks the safety out, finds Nick one-on-one. -on -one. Nick runs a little corner post. And, uh, and then we get back to there, and Nick is in the end zone and uh, having a great day. Now we're up three scores. Wanted to keep that cushion. That was a big thing. Now here, we pop. We, we don't get down inside. Mario's got to get down inside. on the. We blitz off the edge. He's got to get down inside a gap, and he got, he got cut off and uh, cost us to play. Now here, great throw and catch. Ron, Darby's got to run through that ball, run through his arms, and uh, you know, allow the guy to get on top of him. They had some big, strong receivers, but great job here. We, now we start playing great defense. They run it back inside. We're covering. There's, uh, there's Nate Andrews in on the play. Everybody getting to that football. Reggie, great job. Mario Webb was big play right there. Tackle for loss back to the five-yard line. That was very critical. Here they run the ball. Try to, get, try to center the ball back up. We're on third down. Then we, we full blitzed them and, and got to the gaps and made the play. And fourth down, they go for it. Get one-on-one. -on -one. Right here, that, now they had a big receiver, we got a big corner. That's why you got to have big corners right there. P.J. Williams got his hands involved and stripped it, and we got a big fourth down stop. Now we can just got, I'm going to tell you now, he should have stayed. He had a chance to go right there about 90 yards. <laughs> he stumbled on his own. It was a great job by Dalvin, though. But, you know, those young guys will get better and better each time they get out there. But 
very productive half offensively. Had one turnover we didn't need to have, but ran the ball, threw the ball, and uh, scored uh, four out of five drives and, and scored 24 points. 24-6 at intermission. Jameis Winston makes it look easy on the field at times, but uh, he was as crisp as he's been this year. He really was. And a lot of those are either second, third, and fourth guys. Mm -hmm. Fine. And then when the one-on-one, -on -one, we hit number one guys sometimes, but they were, you know, they – they blitzed at times, and other times they, they got back and played soft coverage and made us be patient, and he was patient. We got a lot of guys who can run with the football after catch, so it was a great job by him and those guys. And in defense, great job in the red zone, tight zone. Held, hold him to two field goals and then get a fourth down stop and then have a big interception also in, in the red zone, so very critical for them. Another big play in the first half presented by Naples and Infinity, and uh, we go back to Mario Pender, who uh, – we made a guy miss, to put really it lightly. Did. He did. We, we had to play block perfectly. They spun the safety down. To get, they blitzed and got an extra guy about three yards from the line of scrimmage. Mario gave him a little move and got outside and got it in the end zone, which is you know, that's what you have to do in the red zone. Things are tighter. That's why people like big physical backs or people can make people miss because there's people you can't block all the time. And uh, that, that's where you have to recruit skill, and we did, and Mario had a great run. 24-6 to six at uh, intermission. Second half highlights still to come as Florida State's on the road at Syracuse, and we'll get to those highlights in just a moment. Stay with us. Championship season in review presented by Hyundai. Proud supporter of college football and loyal fans everywhere. On this, the 25th anniversary of the punt Ruski play that broke the hearts of those wearing orange in this same stadium 25 years ago in 1988, we get ready for the kickoff of a national championship implication game. We in here. We in here, y'all. We in here. Guess what, y'all? We ain't leaving without a victory. We ain't leaving without a victory. So y'all, hey, my brothers, put a smile on your face. Okay, because Florida State, if we gonna do it then, we do it big. Let's go, baby. Let's fight, man. My brothers. He swings in motion. Ties Boyd to throw to the right. It is caught by Humphreys. He's got a clips at first. Fumble, fumble football. And the ball belongs yes. to FSU on the very yes. first play of the game. Turnover, Clemson Tigers. Empty backfield for Winston. Here's the snap. Dropping to throw Winston. Throws to the right side. Throw the quarter. The end. It is caught. Yeah! Oh, touchdown, FSU. It is a tremendous catch by Calvin Benjamin. Benjamin goes high in the air with a defender. Has the size advantage. And Winston puts it right where only he could make the grab. The pistol from the Seminole 45. Boyd has the ball. He's hitting the backfield. He fumbled the Pick ball. It up. It's loose. Scooping and score. It's Mario Edwards. Edwards to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown. Yeah. Touchdown, FSU. Taj Boyd fumbles, and the biggest guy in a number 15 I've ever seen goes 40 yards for the touchdown. Side, sidecar left is Devontae Freeman. Here comes pressure, and the pass is, oh, he's thrown the needle. It's caught in the flat to the 40, uh -oh. to the 50. It's Rashad Green to the 40, to the 30. Rashad Green to the 20. Rashad Green 10, 5. Touchdown, mm. FSU. Rashad Green. Mm. Boy, he put on the afterburner, and he takes it to the house. 72. 72-yard catch and run. Rashad Green. The snap to Boyd. Boyd dropping, looking to the side. Throws a pass out. It is intercepted. Picked off LaMarcus Joyner to the 10. Runs it back upfield to the 20. Spins around and is dropped to the 23. Turnover number three, Clemson. LaMarcus Joyner ambushes a Taj Boyd pass. Big time play by a big time player. Philip Dumar, good snap. Here's the spot. The placement kick away. It's good. And the Seminoles lead Clemson 27 to 7 with three seconds remaining in the first half. Give it wide to the left side. Here's the snap to Winston. Here comes pressure. Gets the ball. Ball underneath. They got a screen play. It's inside the 10 yard with the football. Touchdown of show. It's Richard Green again. And the Nose lead 33 to 7. The Tiger Killer. All he does is make plays. 30. We ran a stunt. Here's the snap. And here comes a rolling pocket by Boyd. Under pressure. Throws it up there. And it's intercepted. Picked off by Ronald Darby. And Darby's got the fourth takeaway of the game and returns it to the 34. How about the interception by a sophomore from Maryland? Winston takes the snap and looks upfield. Looks upfield, throws it upfield. Caught. Great catch, O'Leary to the twin. Oh, and he runs over wow. to the 15, to the 10. He's down to the seven yard line. O'Leary lowered a shoulder and ran over a defender. And the Seminoles are inside the 10 yard line. It is first down and goal. Gene. Yes, sir. I got to ask you a question. Is it December? 
because he just got lit up like a Christmas tree on that wow. play. Dropping is Winston. Ball fake. Winston right. running with the ball. Winston pump fake. Pump fake. He dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Jameis Winston. Famous Jameis Winston. He's thrown three and scored one. And the Seminoles lead 40 to 7. Here is the snap. Winston the throw from his own end zone. Looks up here. Fires up here. He's got O'Leary on the 20. To the 30 yard line. O'Leary far side line outside the numbers to the 50. O'Leary to the 40. O'Leary to the 30. O'Leary to the 20. O'Leary to the 10. To the 5 yard line. It's first down and goal. Nick O'Leary. And the Knolls knock on the Clemson door. Here's a snap. The kick is away. And Roberto Aguayo continues to be perfect in his freshman season. 51-14. Florida State knocks off third-ranked Clemson and hands them their worst loss at home in school history. Understand where you're at. Understand the moment you're in. Grasp the moment you're in. Seize them. Live them and enjoy them. But understand the power of preparation and the power of love, trust, and unity above each other. Championship season in review presented by Hyundai, proud supporter of college football and loyal fans everywhere. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Coach, uh, for a change, really, this year, you weren't going to get the ball to start the uh, second half. Seems like yes. the tosses have been going your way, but this time you had to play defense first. We did, and defense went out and got a big stop in the game, and we were able to get the ball, and then we went right down and scored again. We got up four and then, uh, kept the pressure on them. But, you know, that's, that's just the way it goes. And you got and our defense had to be ready for that. I'm kind of glad it happened now. And great, great kickoff by Roberto. We get the ball down there. You see Ryan Green coming down, covering kicks. There, there's Lorenzo Featherston. I can't see who's that. Uh, that's Eddie Goldman again. Eddie, Eddie was the most consistent guy on the day by far. I mean, really played good football. He's doing here. They're dashing. See, now we're getting that edge. Now we're protecting that edge, not getting that free sprint out. Great coverage right there by Jalen Ramsey, making good adjustments. And we get the out, and three and out, and then uh, get the ball coming back. I tell you what, their punter hit some big, long punts. We're inches right here. If we could have widened this hole right to the left just a hair, we had a chance for a big-time return to the left. They, they covered it well. We were inches from getting it. Here, we had a run on, and Jameis keeps finding it outside. Found him. Travis Rudolph got his hands on it. I'm going to tell you what now. A guy can stick his foot in the ground and change direction. He's going to be a really good, great block out there by Ehrman or Bobo. I can't tell which one it was. Here we are, a third down pickup. They're blitzing. Nick got a one on one with the backer, and we won that match at Nick's day. Great job of yak yards after the catch, and uh, just keep moving the ball. Really good on third down for the day. We're really six and nine in the rest when we didn't try to get. Unbelievable play on naked and catch. Had the end coming. Nick catches the ball behind him. That's what good players do right there. Big time play. But we were 6-9 and nine on third down, and then uh, the last one was 6-10. We just ran it. But great job of Dalvin getting the edge right here, running a stretch play. He's got that speed to get to the edge now. He's also a physical guy, as you saw. As that game went on, he's hard to tackle. Here, great throw right here. Oh, and uh, great defense by them. They're, they got up inside. I thought he could have got that ball back to the back of the end zone another couple yards. Here we go. Get another little screen down inside to Rashad. He, he keeps making guys miss now. Just keeps making guys miss. Really nice play. Get a nice play action here. And uh, Bobo Wilson, I like to see that ball a little higher up. That was actually the similar type play we scored in the national championship, the last play of the game right there on the same play action. And uh, he, he had some room to drop it over. He didn't have to throw it up as high. And I uh, hope he did it anyway because Bobo was a little bit shorter than, K than KB was. I was going to say, he threw it <laughs> high to KB and threw it short to Bobo. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it was a good throw and catch. We're up now 31-6. to six. But that, they get a good return. We missed it. We should have cut under right there on the return. We, we could have had that return back inside the 15-yard line. And we, and we got out of it. We had one guy get out of the lane. That's what it tells Right here, same thing happened here. We didn't. We got cut off down inside off one guy. Everybody's in a perfect place. It's a no gain or a one-yard loss, and we have one guy get cut off on the backside, and it, and it hurt us. Now they get back in the game. They, get, I give them, they played hard. And then right here, PJ's in good shape. He cannot look back for the ball. When you're in phase with a guy and you're on the back hip, you've got to run through and then scrape and, and strip the arms when that comes down. You saw Mario back in the game right here. Had a nice little run, and we got back in. But Dalvin got that hot hand, and we left him in the game. Now, Nick O'Leary, Nick's got to get a little more depth on this route. He got about two. We need to get about four or five out of that. And that third down here, actually, we had a whip route, double move, and we beat him too bad on the first move and uh, couldn't get open. And Jameis got to hit that. We actually had a holding call on the backside by Bobby Hart that uh, would have negated the play. And uh, like I said, they negated. Here they are. Screen. Now, here, keeping leverage on the ball. There you go. Run to the football, tackle inside out, step on their toes. Much better job. There we go. Again, hitting everything inside out, stepping on the toe. Tackle much better, got better leverage on the football. Now, Bobo, right? here's what happened. Brutus gets knocked right back into his lap, and he can't catch the punt. we got to make that happen eight or ten yards up there in front of him. We cannot. 
he, he's not going to be able to catch that ball when we get knocked back like that. And I know he didn't do it on purpose, but we got to know where that returner's at and set, the, and set that guy in front of him so they can't get to him. But again, I thought the big – because they had a little momentum there after that and had a chance to get back in the game that could have got to a two-score game. And we get a pick right off to get great pressure on the quarterback, Nate Andrews. Our defense was very opportunistic on the day on Saturday. Three interceptions, and that's, I think, eight turnovers in the last ten quarters. Yes, that, that's big. Dalvin coming out right here and getting good run. I tell you what, they ran the football well. Um, but Dalvin, they'll just keep moving the ball. Now, Jameis gets right here, gets a scramble. I believe he gets uh, – we had a double move trying to take a deep ball. And right here, take a late shot on him right there. And uh, typical 15-yarder. And uh, good job. Keep your poise. Get out of there. I tell you what, when you start getting hit late, you know guys are trying to go after you a little bit. And uh, that gets frustrating. Great job. Third read again to the flat. Dalvin likes seeing near leg, near shoulder, and pick up a few more yards there. But uh, great, great read by Jameis, good route by Ford. Now, we had to route the Nick earlier we were hitting, but they, and I told him, read your shot on that go route. If he gets on top, and he read that and went right to it. So a lot of the plays that Nick was getting right there, we went right back and got to Rashad. So it was a great – Jameis, you know, really understanding what we're doing on offense. And again here, scrambling, picking up a few yards here and there when he gets pressure. Two or three-yard gains are critical right there, being smart, being smart with the ball. 30 for 36 on the day for James. Yes, it was. Got a blitz coming. Great pick up inside by Josue. Allowed us to get, they brought a safety up the middle late and they found, found Nick in a one-on-one -on -one outside and get, get an option right and get the ball to him. Great bounce power play right here by Dan, run through those arms and get in that end zone. Great job by Dalvin Cook. I thought he really had an outstanding game. Boy, he's getting better and better. He's gonna be one heck of a player for us here at Florida State. Defense now. Stop him, we got a big hit on the quarterback. I'm not sure who got it. I hope he's okay. Uh, that guy was a good one. They hit a shuffle pass on third down right there. We're right there on the edges. They get a missed tackle there. And then they get a big block and, uh, and they were mixing around, got the screen game going to here. Great, again, keeping leverage on the ball. Great job, Jalen Ram. Took on the blocker, kept the leverage outside. Uh, just a nice job. Again, you can't cover a guy better than PJ cover. That was a tremendous throw and catch by them. Really was. Now, we got out of phase here. Backer was too wide, and our middle backer needed to be in the middle of the field. He was stepped up playing the back about five yards deep. He should have been sitting about 12 or 14 yards deep in the middle of the field and uh, give up a vertical inside. Very critical mistake right there. Allowed them to get some momentum and get back in the game. Kermit here. Balls, he's going to take a knee anyway. Balls two or three yards deep. And uh, so we get back. Great run here by Dalvin. Run a counter play. We could have got that block on that safety. This thing could have went all the way. But uh, Dalvin really ran the football well. Good blocking up front right there on the right side by Bobby Hart and Trey Jackson and Ryan Hofield, the left side, Josue and uh, Cam. Now, Jameis, the one mistake, I, I, guess I stayed aggressive here. We were getting down the field. It probably should have just been at ball control and uh, trying to get the ball down the field, and he held on to it and got stripped. And great job by Bobby Hart. And uh, this punt wasn't as good. This one, we, he got a good roll, but uh, we got to get that ball back like he kicked the first. The first one he kicked was 44 yards and about a 4-3 hang, which was excellent. They pop a power play here in the quarterback run, but – now, the big thing we're doing here is make them, if they're going to move the field, eat the clock. We're up three scores. Don't, uh, no, don't, don't, don't give them anything easy. Keep leverage on the ball. There we go. Tackle. Tackle. Run to the football. Four or five yard gains. There's only about seven, six, seven minutes to go in the ball game here. Be smart. Great job. Almost uh, got tried for a pick. Their, their guy's knee was down, but he picked up a third down pickup. And got it right there. Here, Mario Webbers. You keep rushing. Got it. Mario got a hat. Hand on the ball and tipped it up, and uh, Tyler Hunter got the ball, and we were able to take the ball and we run the last three or four minutes of the clock out and really pounded that football very well. Great job inside blocking the two tight ends, Nick and Happily. I mean, you see Dalvin now. I mean, he's inches from taking this thing to the house. He keeps breaking tackles, getting more confident. The more he plays, the better he's going to get. Here, a third down pickup. We pick a little rub route and uh, throw it out here to, to an old number 80. And, yeah, he's caught a few balls around here. and uh, Just a few. And we were able to run the clock out. They, they played very hard. Scott did, did a great job coaching those guys. They were ready to play us. They were physical. They were tough. Uh, they did a lot of things we hadn't seen on offense. We made some adjustments. But, again, defensively, I thought we uh, uh, played very well in the red zone, tight zone, created the turnovers. And offense, we were extremely efficient on the day in the red zone and third down in overall period, throwing the football and running it. And uh, good day. 38-20, the final score. Coach, just a comment about Rashad Green and Nick O'Leary, but Nick yep. O'Leary sets the record for most catches by an FSU tight end, and Rashad Green goes past a mark that stood for 46 years, I think. Ron Sellers, all-time reception That's amazing mark. to me. Of all the things, you know, think of all the receivers here and the way you throw the ball in modern times, that the record comes from from Sellers back, run back in the 19, late, late 60s, early 70s, right in that time. That, that's an amazing, it tells you how good they really were. But, you know, Rashad Green, if anybody's going to break your record, be proud of Rashad Green because 
you talk about class on the field, off the field, in the classroom. I, I compare him. I say he's like Derek Jeter. Mm -hmm. He's consistency. Every time he goes on the field, you know what you're going to get. Six, eight catches, 100 yards, a touchdown or two. He's going to be a leader. He's going to do things right. And, and, you talk, and, he make, and every time there's a big play to be made, he's going to make it. Yep. And, but you're going to talk about everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> he just makes all the plays to win and just a class act and has a tremendous effect on our football team. And, I mean, you know, you, you can't have a better ambassador for Florida State than uh, Rashad Green. We could give him the big play of the half about uh, any half, any game of the season. But as we go back and look wow. at the second half, we're going on the defensive side of the ball. This is presented by Xfinity. But the, really, uh, momentum was starting to shift to Syracuse's side of the field. And all of a sudden, well, this play punt. for Our guy got knocked back in our punt yeah. return, and we fumbled. And they can, you know, they up at home when you're on the road, you don't know what can happen. And that's what I was happy. Nate Andrews and our defense got great pressure on the quarterback. I think uh, Mario got, uh, Eddie got pressure, and Mario got the hit on the quarterback as he was throwing it. He got the kick, and Nate Andrews made a big kick and got the momentum of the game. And that's critical, keeping the momentum of the game. And we got it back, and then we went back down and scored and, and took, care of, took care of the game. But very proud of those guys for how they, they were able to swing up the big time play and make the guys rushing the passer. 38-20, the final score. Coach, you always say the, uh, the next game is the biggest game. Yes. Uh, fans don't always buy into that, but I, I believe they think this one's a pretty big game, and we'll talk about it. Notre Dame right. is coming up, Florida State and the Irish. A preview is next. Stay with us on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Inside the Helmet is presented by Nissan. My name is Jared Hagens. I play wide receiver here at Florida State. I'm a red shirt senior. I'm from Lakeland, Florida. Um, I get that question a lot. Um, it's really didn't really come from no specific place. When I was born, my grandfather walked to the hospital, picked me up, and was like, "What's up, Scoop?" And that was it. Um, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, my daddy, I was in my room playing with my little G.I. Joe toys. My daddy walked into the room and was like, um, what you think about football? And I asked him what was it. I didn't know nothing about it. I just know it was something on TV that he watched every Sunday. He said, do you want to play? And I just shrugged my shoulders like, I don't care. So we went, he signed me up. And I had no clue what was going on. I was out there lost. All I know was he was running sprints, running plays. and. My mom and my daddy always told me, you know, always go hard and everything you do, try hard. And I was always first in every sprint. Um, I was never last. I was always first in everything we did. And strangely, I was starting in the starting lineup. I played running back. And all the coach did was tell me, this is the plays, you learn them, and we give you the ball and you run. That's exactly what I did. And I was still lost. I still didn't know the game that much. But after that first season, I asked my mom, I said, when does sign-ups come around again? And she told me, she said, that ever since then, I always asked her and begged her mom, let's, let me go sign up to play football. And ever since that point on, from like, I think it was maybe 11, and now from that point on, I fell in love with the game. I was good at basketball in middle school, but once I got to high school and started lifting weights, then it was a different story. <laughs> After I got to that point in high school, it was just strictly football for me. Oh, and track. I ran track too. Yeah, Odell Higgins, that's my uncle. Um, and I've been knowing him since I was small. I've been coming to football camp here ever since I was in elementary. So I'm really familiar with Florida State University. So uh, it wasn't, you know, something coming into school that I was really wild about because I had always been here every summer. But yeah, um, ever since then, ever since uh, middle school, I've been coming to football camp here, come up here stay with my uncle, and uh, it's been a real good experience. Oh, most definitely my mom, yeah. Most definitely, I mean, she sacrificed a lot for me and my brothers. She was a single parent. And um, I walked to the end of the world and back for her. So yeah, that was most definitely my mom was my hero. Um, being that I was hurt last year, I couldn't, you know, be a part of helping them get that victory. But I was their biggest cheerleader. <laughs> I was on the sideline cheering them on and be able to watch them, you know, come overcome adversity and prosper through everything that we've been through. You know, it was just a great. It couldn't be a greater feeling. Inside the helmet is presented by Nissan.
told you it'd be tough. Them guys played now. That was a physical group of players now. Big physical. They played hard. He did a great job. Great job to you. Go on, anytime you go on the road and win, guys, that, that's a heck of a time. I don't care what people don't understand how hard it is going on the road and win. Tremendous job. Now, offense, very efficient. Great day. Had one turnover on the day. That's how Bobby Little played. Great. Hey, Bobby Hart, great job on that hustle on that ball. Okay? Great job of hustling on that ball. Uh, defense. Bent. A lot of things we got to get cleaned up. But I'm going to tell you what you did. Created a couple turnovers and played tremendous, tremendous red zone defense. I got a couple special honors here today. Uh, we had a guy who six balls, broke 100 yards again today, and became the uh, all time leading receiver in uh, Florida State history. We also had another record broke today. This guy on the day had eight catches for 97 yards and a touchdown. He already holds the touchdown record for that position, but also just uh, broke the uh, most catches in the history of any tight end in Florida State history. Hey, congratulations. That was a tremendous honor. I mean, there's been a lot of great players that played here. That's what I tell you guys. We're achieving a lot of things. You have a chance to be a special, special organization, a special group with a special mindset. I'm proud to be here with you. We've got to keep taking this thing another level, okay? Had some guys step up. Mr. Pender, great job of stepping up there. Dalvin Cook broke 100 yards today. The freshman stepped up and took the ball and carried that thing. That was a great job. Defense, great job getting those turnovers red zone. Punted the ball well. Kicked it well. Everybody's got to make a contribution, guys. We've got to keep adding to this repertoire. Adding to this repertoire things we do. But I'm going to tell you something. Enjoy every win. It was great, okay? We'll take this heel up. Go back. Be ready to play this week. Our look ahead is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Register at KnollsContest.com for a chance to be the official photographer of the game. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Florida State back in the spotlight this week, Coach. You get a uh, primetime game, unbeaten Notre Dame, unbeaten Florida State. College game day will be here. And I know to you that's all the, the clutter, but it's going to be a, a game that a lot of folks are interested in watching. Well, it's great for your program. I mean, it's the third time college game day has been with us this year. Two times here in Tallahassee, once out in Dallas. And so... From that part, you know, perspective, it's great for your program, great exposure, and it's what you go to college football for in, in the Florida State to play in these kind of games and have chances to win national championships and, and play in that spotlight. Notre Dame has certainly played in a lot of these games over the years with all yes. of their tradition. They've got, uh, you know, a quarterback that wasn't there last year but was with them two years ago when they played in the national championship game in Everett Golson. Yeah, they did, and uh, we, we had him in the bowl game. He was still on their team when we were down in the bowl game. Mm -hmm. He was a great player for them, and the uh, guy's done an outstanding job. He can run, he can throw, he's a smart young man. He's the definite leader of their team. They've got great skill on offense. They're very dynamic, very multiple on defense, returners. I mean, they're undefeated for a reason, and Brian Kelly's a heck of a football coach. How do you manage the, uh, the emotional aspect of what this week can be and the, the spotlight and, and all those type things to make sure your team's ready to play at the right time? Well, the good thing about it, you, you educate them about it, talk to them about it, have a plan for what you're going to allow them to do, mm -hmm. not to do, and, and when the media's in and when they're not. But also, go back on past experiences. We've been in this spotlight for a while. Mm -hmm. And that's what I say. The more times this stadium sold out, the more times we go to these big time arenas, we go to, to game days there and all these things, it puts you, in, hey, this is normal. This mm -hmm. is what we do. And uh, that's part of being at Florida State and hopefully we can keep it that way. And I think that's as critical of playing these games as actually playing the game. Yeah, it's going to be a great atmosphere, no question. Florida State and Notre Dame both unbeaten. Uh, 8 o'clock kick this Saturday at Doe Campbell Stadium. All right, there's still more ahead. Stay with us. We'll continue right after this in the Jimbo Fisher Show. Our look ahead is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Register at KnollsContest.com for a chance to be the official photographer of the game. Welcome back, everyone. We're joined by a head chef of Florida State Athletics, Joyce Simons. Joyce, we're going to be making something today a southern favorite everybody loves to enjoy, but we're making it more nutritious. We're taking on the portion size. Tell our viewers what we're going to be making today. Well, today, Scott, we're going to be making sweet potato pie cupcakes. We're taking E.J. Manuel's favorite treat, 
and we're going to modify the portion size on it so he can enjoy them during football season and st still get the things he loves, but not necessarily all the calories. So today, we're going to make the batter and then we're going to decorate it up. We have um, an egg and some brown sugar. We're going to mix those together until they're all incorporated. And then we're going to add in some good old butter. Nothing like butter, right? Makes no. everything makes yeah. everything taste better. It might yes. be nutritious, but that's definitely yes. going to give it some flavor. So after it's all mixed together, we're going to add vanilla. And then I went ahead and pureed some sweet potatoes. And we're going to add that in, because you can't have sweet potato, potato, sweet potato pie without sweet potatoes. It's one of those things everybody in the South grows up loving, a sweet potato pie. Yeah. And it's one of those things you gotta you gotta find some way to enjoy it, I guess. And Lord knows if it were an entire pie, I'd sit here and eat the whole thing probably. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> glad we're focusing on portion control yeah. today. We're definitely going to make something delicious but with a few less calories. So after the sweet potatoes are together, we're gonna add some flour. And then we have baking soda to help it rise, cinnamon, nutmeg, and some salt. And nutmeg is one of those things that makes everything kind of more pungent, I guess. It makes, it makes I guess you get more of the spice really out of the sweet potato. Yeah. S nutmeg helps potatoes taste a lot better. You would never know some of the dishes nutmeg's in, but thins in lots of potato dishes. And that'd be like a pumpkin pie or something like that. You'd see a lot, of, a lot of nutmeg, a lot of cinnamon in that. Yeah. So we're gonna mix it all together. And then when the flour's together, we're gonna add milk. And once it's all together, I have it right here. We're gonna mix it and I have it in a mixer. So it's got, to make it a little smaller portions, we have a muffin tin here and I already oiled it. And then we're gonna scoop them out. So this way you know exactly how much you're getting in a portion. We're gonna scoop them in. And then we're gonna bake them at 350 for about 15 minutes or until you get a toothpick that comes out clean. So we have the cupcakes done, and I went ahead and made a marshmallow fluff frosting. So I took good old fluff here, and we whipped it with some butter. Again, great tasting. Gotta love the butter. And then some powdered sugar, and we're just, I put it in a piping bag. You can always use a Ziploc bag at home. And we're just gonna pipe it on. Not too much. And then if you want, Scott, you can dip it in the frost, or this is graham cracker crumbs right here. You can dip it in that, or you can just sprinkle a little on top, depending how much flavor of the graham you want. Let's, so you let's have dip to, it. Yeah, yeah we, we want some graham cracker You have to have the there. taste of the crust. And this is a way for EJ to enjoy his favorites during the season and not have all the calories. So, do you want to try one? <laughs> do I want to try one? Is that even a question? <laughs> Absolutely. Nutritious, but man, does it taste good. <laughs> Joyce, thanks for joining us. As always, a great way to maintain portion control, but enjoy sweet potato pie, one of my personal favorites. Thanks, Scott. Remember, all of Chef Joyce's recipes you can find right now by visiting Seminoles.com, the official website of Florida State Athletics. Welcome back. Coach, I want to look back at uh, the Syracuse game just a little bit. You mentioned uh, the word blitz a lot because Syracuse is pretty aggressive, but yes. it seemed like you guys did a good job handling the blitz, and I know part of that is Jameis, but just talk overall about well, what you guys had to prepare for. for what, with well, what also, they you had two young backs, Mario Pender and Dalvin Cook, first time in there. Mm -hmm. uh, Freddie Stevens and those backs have to be just as responsible tight ends and receivers also breaking routes off, reading mm -hmm. blitzes hot routes, sight routes, you know, and all being on the same page in our offensive line. I mean, where the mic calls are and which way they're sliding, how they're coming back and where their help is. And I thought our offensive line and backs and tight, you know, everyone did a great job of that. We spent a lot of time on it, which is if you can't handle the blitz in, in today's time, it, it's hard to move the football. And they, they, they bring a multitude of blitzes and uh, we did a great job with them. Defensively, I know you were really pleased with how the defense played in the red zone. What needs to happen or what will it take to get the defense more consistent across the board for 60 minutes? Well, I think as, as, as we get guys healthy, get back, get consistency of the same guys in there and get, add more depth. And our young guys, when you put, you know, you spell those older guys with young guys, sometimes they give up a play or two. And that's just experience. And, but if you can't play your old guys, you know, all 80 plays of the game, you have to go in there and, and those young guys, I keep saying, as our young guys develop, that's going to be the consistency of our football team and how well they come on. And they're doing a great job. I'm very happy with them. But we have to understand they're going to make a mistake or two at times. But, you know, they're, start, they're growing out of those as we come along. 
All right, well, Coach, you're 6-0 uh, and oh thus far. Notre Dame is uh, on deck. It'll be a great atmosphere, great environment. We'll have all the highlights next week yeah. right here. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on the Jimbo Fisher Show. Yeah.